This is a big bow. It's stuffed to the brim with marinated chicken, sausage, minced pork, shiitake mushrooms, and a half a whole boiled egg. Now, the obvious question you might naturally have might be, why make a bao so big? What's wrong with a normal size baozi? And while the answer of because we can should probably be as good a rationale as any, there actually is a pretty interesting reason as to why these specific baozi got so big. See, you might be familiar with Cantonese zao lao or wine houses, but I'm pretty sure everyone outside of China just calls them Cantonese restaurants. These are places where the rich can flaunt their status by ordering hundreds of dollars of abalone and lobster, yes. But interestingly, unlike similar high-end restaurants in the West, that's not their only function. From the morning to the early afternoon, they serve dim sum at prices that don't break the bank for the middle class. And outside the restaurant on the street, there's sometimes a baozi stand, ready for workers to grab and go on the cheap. So Big Bao comes from that chalo baozi stand tradition. It was invented as a way for workers to eat an entire tasty meal in one hand. So these three baozi here are for three people. Each one is meant to be an entire meal in and of itself. So to start, let's look at the fillings. Feel free to either prep these guys in advance or just sort them when your baozi dough is fermenting. Either way, here we've got two dried shiitake mushrooms reconstituted in a bowl with hot boiled water, two eggs, hard boiled, and here we're using seven minute eggs, and a half a Cantonese lap chong sausage cut into chunks. Then, for our meat, for the chicken, just cut up a half a chicken thigh into one inch chunks and marinate that with a quarter teaspoon each salt, sugar, and white pepper, and a half teaspoon each cornstarch, soy sauce, oyster sauce, and liaojiu, aka Shaoxing wine. Mix well, then add in a drizzle of toasted sesame oil. Then just dice up those now reconstituted shiitake mushrooms, reserving that liquid. Mix that in with the chicken and set that aside. Now, for the pork, here we're going to be hand mincing 150 grams of leg. But if you have to, you could also swap that for some pre-ground supermarket 80-20. But when hand mincing, best practice is to first separate out the fat. Slice that into a fine dice, then set it aside, and just start going at that lean. With pork, a couple cleavers will make quick work of this. So after about 5 minutes of chopping, you should be looking at a uniform paste like this. Then toss that lean into a bowl and add an 8 teaspoon salt, a quarter teaspoon sugar, 8 teaspoon soy sauce, 8 teaspoon white pepper powder, half teaspoon cornstarch, and a quarter teaspoon liaojiu aka Shaoxing wine. Mix well, then go in with 1 tablespoon of the mushroom soaking liquid from before and give that a real good stir. Then just toss in the diced fat together with about a half teaspoon of oil. Mix that real well, and our fillings are good to go. Okay, now for the baozi dough here, we thought it might be helpful to give you a high-level overview of what's going to be going on here at first. So these baozi follow the sponge and dough method, so we'll need to first make 11 and give it a few hours to bulk ferment. Then using that, you'll make the main dough, knead it, and let it relax. After that, you'll smooth the dough by passing it through a pasta maker, which will give the baozi a more attractive look in the end. Then you'll portion, Shape, roll out the wrapper, wrap up the baozi, then just give it a final proof and steam. So, sponge up first. To make it, first dissolve 1 gram of instant yeast into 48 grams of water, and add that into 100 grams of cake flour. Press that together to form it into a bit of a ball, toss it in a Ziploc bag, and let it sit for about 3 hours. But, note our climate. If you live somewhere cooler, you will need to let that go for a bit longer. And during that time, this would also be a pretty good time to prep those fillings. Either way, you'll know your sponge is ready if you can take it out and you can sort of see a lattice when you rip it open. This is referred to as feng wo zhuang or beehive texture in Chinese. Now, because the specific yeast we're using today is not osmo tolerant, we're going to need to mix our yeast separately from our sugar. So to one bowl, mix a gram of instant yeast in with 18 grams of water and in a separate bowl, dissolve 24 grams of sugar into 30 grams of water, and in a third bowl, mix a teaspoon of baking powder together with 100 grams of cake flour. Then just add the flour mix into your beehive 11, give it a quick mix, then add in the yeast water. After another quick mix, sugar water in, form it into a dough, and now we can knead. So, forgive us for moving inside here, that aforementioned subtropical climate loves to ferment stuff fast. But just knead that together for about six minutes. And while you could definitely use a stand mixer with a hook attachment here, we're big proponents that it's best to learn using hand kneading at first. It'll give you a more tactile sense of the development of the dough. 
And speaking of which, when kneading, make sure that you're actually developing the gluten by continuously folding the dough over itself. Do not knead like Pusheen kneads. You'll be ready to move on here once your dough's gotten to a smooth, almost Play-Doh-like consistency, like so. And it's at this stage that you'll want to add in your fat. Here, 10 grams of lard. If you added that in before kneading, it would inhibit gluten development, which might be what you want from a crumbly brioche, but it's definitely not what you want from a baozi. So after another two minutes of kneading, toss that in a bowl, cover, and let it relax. So 30 minutes later now, we'll be passing that dough through a pasta maker. Wide a setting, fold it in half, pass it through again, seven times total. The logic here, similar to Japanese milk bread, you're trying to compress out any air bubbles in order to make a nice smooth final dough. So after that, just roll that tightly into a log, cut it into three sections, and you're aiming for about 110 grams each bow. So now shape those sections into balls by pressing them flat and folding the edges into the center to get a vaguely ball-like object. Then toss that on your work surface crinkly side down and twist it much like you were as if you were shaping bread. Rolling it into a ball this way instead of just going at it like a clumsy oaf, will give you a smoother, more even result in the end. Then just set those balls aside for a quick five minutes to relax once again. Now, to turn those into wrappers. Take your ball and first roll it flat a couple times in each direction. Then just gently grab that and roll out the sides a bit thinner using the edge of the rolling pin. The idea here is that we need our center to be hefty enough to hold our veritable smorgasbord of fillings, but the edges to be thin enough to cleanly pleat. In the end, you'll want your wrappers to be about 20 centimeters wide. So, finally, to wrap. Because these guys are just so massive, Steph actually finds it easiest to use a bowl to help assist. So, first just toss in three tablespoons of your pork filling, spread it even, nestle in a third of your lapchong, three tablespoons of the chicken filling, and toss in your egg. If you're feeling ambitious, do a whole one. If not, a half an egg is also super common. Then just grab the edge and start working around and pleating that baozi. The more pleats you can fit in, the nicer it'll look. Then, at the end, pinch it up at the very center, and you've got yourself a baozi. If that was a bit on the fast side for you, though, definitely do check out the whole uncut video of the process up here before trying to make this yourself. So then, just toss those over some parchment paper and proof over 35 centigrade water for 15 minutes. Then, after that time, Place your steamer over some heavily bubbling water and steam over high for 20 minutes. And after that time, your big baozi are done. Delicious and certainly do what's on the tin. So big bao, Cantonese thai bao, traditionally it's often made with the uh, cha siu bao, that fluffy crackling uh, dough. But many people find working with that dough extremely challenging. So we went with this sweet Cantonese uh, classic bao zi dough. That's also fluffy and also a totally legit and classic wrapper for big bao. So right, check out the recipe in the description box. A big thank you for everyone that's supporting us on Patreon. And of course, don't forget to subscribe for more Chinese cooking videos.